All right, so we're going to talk about uh, SOI today. There, I was just, actually, you know what? I was just going to text you and be like, you're not coming? No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't use the restroom. All right, right, you're good. So um, is Shauna coming up, Gabe? No, she, she's having issues with her car, so she's not here today. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to go through today. We're going to talk about working your sphere of influence, and I'm going to give to you guys... Um, Four things that you should be doing with your sphere of influence that will help you to close more deals off of it, okay? So now, but where I'm going to start with, though, first is I first want to go through and we're going to talk about another group of people first. So I'm going to, I'm going to quickly go through and talk about three groups of, of people, okay? Yeah, just sign that. Just so that I have a record of who is there. Okay. So we're going to talk mostly about your sphere of influence, which is this third category over here. But before we get to that, I'm going to spend a few minutes on these two. So we're going to spend a really short amount of time on these two just to make sure you're clear. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time talking about this. So the first thing I want to talk about with you is what makes someone a client? Okay. What, what would make somebody a client? And think in terms of... So in terms of, um, don't think in terms of the division of real estate, although you can somewhat. But for me, the definition of a client is not going to be the same definition that the, at, that the division of real estate has for a client. Meaning the division of real estate would say that as soon as you sign an agreement with them, they're a client, right? Yes? No? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. legal definition. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. That's... That's included in what we're going to talk about here, but there are four things that make somebody a client. And, and here's how I think about a client, is a client is somebody you're going to get paid from, okay? So if you're going to get paid from these people, there are four things that have to happen. But the first one would be what we already said, which is they have to be committed to working exclusively with you. And how do we demonstrate that they're committed to working exclusively with you? Yeah, is they're going to sign either a listing agreement or a buyer broker agreement, right? So, so first thing I'm going to have you guys write down for this is they're committed to working exclusively with you. Now, is it possible, though, for somebody to be committed to working exclusively with you but not sign a buyer broker? Yes. yes. Is it possible for somebody to sign a buyer broker but not be committed to working exclusively with you? Yes. 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 Okay. So keep in mind... The, the, the way that they demonstrate their commitment is through the buyer broker or the listing agreement. However, for me, the definition is they have to be committed to working exclusively with you. Now, they may or may not have signed an agreement. There are people who would be committed to working with you, just haven't signed an agreement yet. They, I would say that they would check that box. Okay, what else would have to happen for somebody to be a client? You be uh, willing to let you lead them. Okay, good. I like willing to let you lead them. What were you saying, Julie? We need to have all their information that they've given to you, or you can have to get from them. Okay, like what do you mean? Like their email, their phone number. Okay. Voluntarily, they they're connecting with you. Okay, good. They're okay with it. I like it. I think the other thing that you need with the client is they have to be able to buy. Okay, good. So that's here's I'm gonna here's how I'm gonna write it. You're on the right track. Is I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna write it down here as need. I'll tell you. Here's how you guys should write it down. Uh, I, I didn't know. Yeah. So uh, okay. For, here's how I would. If you're taking notes, this is how you should write it down. They have clear and present needs that can be met. So you said able, which is essentially what I'm saying, but they have to have clear and present needs that can be met. So clear and present needs that can be met. So that would include, like they're qualified, they're able. So clear and present needs, meaning they're clear on what it is, it's something in the present that they need, and it can be met, it exists. It's not like, hey, yeah, find me a, Find me a home that's 10,000 square feet for $200,000 and I'll buy it. Like, okay, it might be clear, <laughs> but 
So can that be met? So did you say it's not in Utah? Did no. you say clear and present needs that can be met? That no, can. can't. Can. C A N. All right. Can be met. Yep. Okay. What else would have to happen? The, the, these next two get a little bit harder. What else would have to a client have, do, be in order for them, for my definition of them to be a client? But for you, it's like did I, well, I can know I'm going to get paid. I'll help you. Wouldn't you have a, need to have a commitment to action? Because there's a difference between having it, like they're committed to working Good. with you. Yes, you're right on. Oh, okay. You're right on. Now, so here's how I define it, is they have to be committed to buying or selling now. So when you're saying the action, it's like they're committed to working exclusively with you. They have clear and present needs that can be met. Are they ready to take the action to do it? Yeah. Now, now, what's the definition of now? For me, the definition of now is when I find this property, if, I, if it's a buyer, if I find this property, they're going to write the offer. If it's a seller, when we get an offer in that is meets your needs, you're going to take it. You're not, they're not going to say, oh, that's a great property. Now we just got to wait until we save up uh, some money. Like, that's not now. Now, so there's, now does not mean tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Just, I want to be clear. It doesn't mean it tomorrow but, or today. It just means, hey, you know what you want. You're committed to working exclusively with me. When we find it, you're prepared to act. Okay, good. Any ideas on the last one? This one's the hardest one. Here's how I'm going to write it down. They have to be tethered. What does tethered mean? If something's tethered, what, what do you think about when you hear tether? Attached. Okay, good. Attached. So if you think about as a kid playing tetherball, like at school or something, you got the pole, a chain or a rope, and then this ball on the end of it. it. That ball is tethered to that pole. It's tied to. So how would we tie our clients to us? And it's not the contract, because we already talked about that up here. Okay. So I like it. You're on the right track. Our time. Our dedicated our time. Okay, good. Yeah. It crystallized with us. But how is that going to tie it? Okay, good. I like where you, which, by the way, crystallized would be this need. Clear and present needs that can be met. They've crystallized. So good. Wouldn't this tie into having a buyer broker agreement or a ERS signed? No, nope, because that's up here. There's so okay. so this this is why I say like I'll I'm just going to give it to you. Mostly connected. Close. We tether them to us through. Appointments. So here's what I would say. When you have somebody, so think of it this way. When you have somebody who's committed to working exclusively with you, they have clear and present needs that can be met, and they're ready to go now, don't ever leave an appointment without scheduling the next appointment. You will, whenever, it, so as the principal broker, when I get calls from agents within our company of saying, hey, I got this client that I was working with, and I signed a buyer broker with them, and then they went and bought a house with somebody else, I 100% can guarantee you if I said to them, did you have an appointment scheduled with them? The answer is going to be no. Meaning the way we lose clients is we don't, if once you schedule an appointment with somebody, when you leave that appointment, schedule the next appointment. But uh, Russ, how do we go about, because there are times like where you'll have a sophisticated buyer so that isn't necessarily ready. I, I know that kind of that's not necessarily notching in like number two. But how do you go and schedule that? Because sometimes I might not have like if I have a very sophisticated buyer that they need a very specific price point and specific needs. How do you go about setting that next appointment? Okay, so that, that's something that is confusing. I know you've talked about appointments before, but how do you schedule? Because I don't want to waste their time if I don't necessarily have any. So, so let me just make sure I understand. They're committed to working exclusively with you. Yes. They have clear and present needs that can be met. Yeah. They're ready to go now. It's just the property's not available. Yeah, or they may not have, like, uh, yeah, well, I think that's the best way to put it is they're either not, they don't have a property. Like this yeah, is, it doesn't, what they want yeah. hasn't come on the market. It only comes on the market every six months or whatever. Yeah, like okay. something like that. 
So in that type of a scenario, then yes, I would for sure say then what you would want to do is, and it doesn't really matter what it is, and maybe it's just you say to them, okay, I'm really clear on what it is you need. It just doesn't exist right now. Here's what I'm going to do. So here's what, basically, here's how I would do it. Is that sophisticated buyer? I would be saying to them, what we're going to do, let's schedule an appointment to get meet again in a month. I'm going to go to work between now and then to, to try to come up with that property for you. And then let's meet again in a month just so that I can update you. Now, something like that, my let's meet again in a month, I would prefer it to be in person, but it could be that you just say, hey, let's, let's schedule a Zoom. Like, I don't, I don't want it, I want it to be more than a phone call. I want them to see me. So I would do like a Zoom or a FaceTime, something like that with them, where what I would do then, so with that, so let's say that we had one that was like, this is the property I want, and there's nothing on the market that matches it. I have a cash buyer that's just like that. Right? Okay, so then what I would do is I would go and be door knocking. During that month, I'm going to go out and knock on doors of people who have a house that matches it and be saying, Julie. I've got somebody who wants to buy a house exactly like yours. At what price would you be willing to sell your house? See what she said. Like, I would, I'm going to go to work for that. Then, in a month from now, I'm going to meet with that buyer and sit down and go, okay, let me tell you what I've done. I went and knocked on this door and this door and this door. I mean, especially if it's, if it's a, when, you, when you're saying sophisticated, I'm assuming that it's also a high price. Okay. Is that right? It's a decent price. It's like he's got cash at up to 450 hands like but this is something he wants to kind of fix up more but it could be investor type oh he's willing to go up okay. to like 550. i got you yeah so okay. um, sophisticated it means both ways because sometimes i'll have one that's a higher price point but they have a very specific need and i'm like i don't know but i got gotcha. you okay so yeah that where do you get that information Wes? well like, oh, and like with you just go on door knock do you pull that up on you pull that up on the mls and just have everything active that you can see it's that description so that yes area. that's probably what i would do is start with that the other thing that i would initially would say too is do, if you know an area then i would go knock on doors in the area okay. specifically looking for properties that look like they would be potential fix up the other thing you could do is like we have one in our company right now that's going on that um one of our agents has a connection to a funeral home and a guy came in to do the funeral for, I don't know if it was mom or dad or whatever, they're both passed away now. Yeah. And the guy just mentioned the funeral director of like, yeah, I don't know, I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the house and all that kind of stuff now. Well, the funeral director goes, oh, we need to talk to so-and-so because he's an agent and he can help you. And, and this one is one, like, I want the deal. Yeah. Like the guy, they owe $220,000 on the house. And he's like, I'm just going to probably just let it go back to the bank. Current condition, you could probably list it for 475. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to buy that house. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so I guess to some extent, I'd say talk to divorce attorneys, talk to funeral directors, and find out. Hey, if somebody comes in and says to you, "I'm getting divorced and we need to sell our house," who do you refer them to? Do you have somebody? Because I want to be that guy okay. or gal or whatever. So good. Okay, we good on this. So, Ross, when you're saying the funeral directors, attorneys, people around, that they refer people to you, you don't offer them nothing in return. Just, just I'm a contact person and so, that's it. Great question. So legally, you cannot tell them, if you refer something to me, I will pay you anything. You can't, mm -hmm. unless they're licensed. Now, if you just say, if you find somebody, send them to me, and they do send them to you, then you could pay them up to two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. But it has to be an unsolicited My, uh, the, the referral. Rich, yeah, you you never talk, you never. Send you can't them tell them the moment you tell them, I'll give you money. You can't. Okay, so you never tell anything, but you could do that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you just say, "Hey, I want to be the person that that." Yeah, I, if you have somebody that needs an agent, I want to become that person. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so those are clients. The next group that we're going to talk about here is what I sometimes call prospects. Or, well, yeah, think of it as prospecting. So we'll just say prospects. Or you could even actually say leads, maybe. That would work as well. Okay, so think of it this way. 
The people that are in this column are deficient in one or more of these. So when you have somebody that maybe is committed to working exclusively with you, they have clear and present needs that can be met, maybe, or yeah, well, let's even just say they're ready to go now, but you don't have an appointment. So if you had somebody that's committed to working exclusively with you, they have clear and present needs, they're, they're ready to go now, but you don't have an appointment with them, in my mind, they're not a client. Now, again, the state's definition in my mind as a principal broker, you have a client. But from the standpoint of me training you on getting paid, you don't have a client. You have a prospect. So, what, what, what was that again? Sorry. So these people are missing one or more of these. So if I think of it as just when you're prospecting and you get on the phone and just call, you call a lead, that may, an internet lead, you call a... Uh, for sale by owner, you call an expired listing, you call cold call, you go knock on doors. What you're doing is you're saying, I got, I'm going out and trying to find people who will be committed to working exclusively with me, have clear and present needs that can be met, that are ready to go now, and then I want to get an appointment with them. That's what prospecting is, is we're trying to create this. So if they're missing one of these, in my mind, you're still prospecting. You don't have, you don't have a client, you're prospecting still, you're hoping. So, so keep in mind back here to under this clients, the tethered is how we manage our clients. That's more of a client management is we manage clients through appointments. Okay. Can I ask another question about the tether? Yes. One, um, how would you break that down between like, let's say that you have people that are ready to go right this second, that as soon as you find them a deal, they are ready to go have money in hand to get it done and will be done in like 14 to 20 days to the people that already but may need a little bit more time how would you tether those appointments so we can move more people from that lead prospect to those where we got one through three done now we're just consistently doing number four because the money is in the follow-up in this business and that's correct that we can all correct i know for a fact i can do a better job with that and i want to do how would you do that because that number four i think is something that i so, definitely but, need to do but are you saying that you don't have the appointment is that what your question yeah, is yeah yeah like i don't have the appointment. Okay, I have good. people that are ready to go. Yeah, and but you just don't have the appointment. Yeah. So they're here. Well, okay. <laughs> is that, that's what I'm saying is they're, they're not here, then they're here. Got so it. how do we manage them here? These people are missing one or more of these. The way we manage this group is through appointments. But if I don't have an appointment, how am I going to manage them? All so those. even... Good. So even, even when we got to number four, that we had the contract, the need, everything, and we are in number four, and we may meet with them and they sign the papers. If we didn't put a second appointment, it's considered. Then I'm saying they're back here. Oh, okay. Because you can't have a client without an, in my mind, again, this is not as the principal broker, just as the trainer and saying, if you want to get paid, don't ever leave an appointment with a client without scheduling the next appointment. You manage your clients through appointments. And the appointment might be their due diligence. The appointment might be the closing. The appointment might be to go back and evaluate how many offers we've got, if it's a listing, how many offers we've gotten, how many showings, and what feedback did we get. But don't ever leave an appointment with a client without scheduling the next appointment. If you do that, you won't lose clients. Well, I know, that's yeah, why I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now back to this one. So the way that we're gonna manage these prospects, and remember, they're missing one or more of these things, is we're going to manage them with contact one time per week until, so we're going to have contact with them once a week until one of three things happens. They either become a client, they become what we're going to talk about next, or You drop them. So these people, we stay in contact once a week with these people until we either be, get them to become a client because they made all four of these, or I'm going to keep calling them once a week until I figure out they're like, let's say that they're, they have all this, but they just are like, we, there's a condition. There's some condition that they can't do it right now. Well, I don't want to drop them, but I also am probably not going to like, if it, if it was a condition of like, and I, I don't know, like I'm getting a job transfer and we're going to move, but not till next summer. 
2020, summer of 2025. Well, I don't want to call that person every single week, right? I'm not going to schedule appointments with them. So then in that case, I'm going to move them over to this group, which is what we're going to spend the rest of the class talking about. But keep in mind your prospects or your leads, you should be calling weekly until they become a client. You just flat out drop them or you move them over here to this group that I sometimes like to call, these are suspects. And I say that to try to get a laugh, so thank you. <laughs> but really it's your SOI, okay? These are the people you're gonna be the SOI. Now, so that's what we're gonna spend the rest of this class talking about is there are four criteria, just like there were four here, there are four things that you need to do with this group of people. And here's the thing. Here's the thing I will tell you. I can tell you with confidence, if you will do the four things that I'm going to show you here, I can guarantee you, you're going to make over $200,000 a year in this business. I will guarantee it. If you will do these four things. 20 suspects. Yes. Yeah, so I, if you'll yeah, do the writing. four, what? I'll, yeah, I'll go put it in writing. Even. Yes, I'll put it in writing because if it, it, here's why. The reason I'll put it in writing, Scott, is because it's a math problem. Working your sphere of influence is a math problem. It's not a people problem. It's a math problem. And I'm going to give you the four criteria, and here's what I will promise you is if you will do it, it will work. If you want me to put it in writing, Scott, I will do it. But you got to do you got to do oh, these four things. Oh, I know you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it because and the reason I can guarantee it is because it's a math problem. It's not a people problem. And I just realized I forgot something that I usually use in this class. I left it downstairs, so I'll I'll just explain it. We won't use it. But. So so now keep in mind the, get it? what you I want the full experience. You need me to go get it. I do need to go use the restroom so I can go get it. Go go use the restroom, but um, the problem is I don't know that I could tell you where it's at in my office. I have to go find it. So, oh. but that's fine. I, I'll I'll make it make sense to you. All right. Okay. Now, so keep in mind. Here's the thing: the way that most people work uh, approach working their sphere of influence, they approach it as a people problem, not a math problem. And you got to approach it as a math problem. So we're going to talk about two types of systems. But before we do that, since I said it's a math problem, here's what I'll do, Anthony, is I'm going to show you guys a video. It's a two-minute video. In that two minutes, I will go get what I do. So now, keep in mind, I've got this video I'm going to show to you here. And this video is going to help explain the math problem that we're going to talk about. I figure 75% to you, Papa, and 25% divided between the five of us. You know, Crowbar, myself, and Tom, and the baby. I figure 75%. Okay. So let me get this on. Yeah, it's 2 minutes and 11 seconds. We'll see how fast that is. <laughs> Back. You better take the stairs. <laughs> I'm going to take the stairs. Yeah, I'll take the stairs. All right, let me get this the projector going here. I'll turn off the lights. I'll hit play and then I'll run downstairs. I can't believe I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Now oh, there it is. It's just loading up really slow. All right. Can you see it good enough yet? So yeah. this. So actually, let me explain what this is for games because he's too young. But <laughs> just kidding. Most of, Anthony's too young. Michael's too young. The rest of us are probably old enough. But <laughs> this is uh, Mom Pocket. Who knows who Mom Pocket are? Okay. See, I, I guess I'm. I was gonna say me and Scott. The only ones. Okay. So Mom Pocket was a sitcom that was on TV back before TV was in color. So it's just black and white. And so this was basically, and they were always considered to be dumb, mom and pa. So that's, you're going to watch a little clip of this while I go grab And but, but this is relevant to what we're going to talk about in the class, and I'll show you why. Because he's going to do some math with mom and pa kettle. And when he does it, just think about common core math. Okay? I figure 75% to you, mom and pa. 
and 25% divided between the five of us. Gina, Crowbar, myself, Tom, and the baby. That makes 5% for each one of us. Ah, uh, Billy, you're cheating yourself. If there's 25% divided among the five of you, okay. that's 14% apiece. Oh, no, that's impossible. I, I wouldn't cheat you. You know I wouldn't. Now, look. Look here. I'll show you. Let me run this out here. That's two down. 25 divided by 5 is 5. You see, yeah, the 5 won't put it too, will it? No. But 5 goes into 25 five times. You see? No, you're wrong, Billy. Now, now, I'm pretty good mathematician. Now, 5 into 25... Five won't go into two. No. But five goes into five once. Now, we didn't use the two before, so we're going down to here. Now, five into twenty goes four times. There you are. Five into twenty-five. Fourteen. No, look, Pa. Uh, let me prove it to you now. My multiplication. Uh, five times five. Five times five is twenty-five. I'm surprised you're learning. Huh? I'm surprised that you're learning. Now I'll show you. Five times fourteen is twenty-five. Five times four is twenty. Five times one is five. Twenty-five. That's it. No, no, look, Ma. See, it, it, look, you're, you're wrong there because you know, I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'll, we'll put down four, five fourteens here. Fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. There. Now, now I'll prove to you by addition that, that five fourteens is not twenty-five. Four, eight. 12, 16, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. <laughs> Brush up, Billy. I want to see you boys cheating. <laughs> All right. Does that remind you of Common Core, man? <clears throat> Did you do a Common Core ever? I think we did. Yeah. All right, but on. they don't ever tell us if it's common core. We just kind of. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so now the reason I show you that video is, is in a second here you're gonna think I'm doing mom pa kettle math, but I'm not. Okay, <laughs> but I'll prove it to you. So here's what here's where we're gonna go next with this. So I just guaranteed you guys, told you that if you'll do these four things, it's guaranteed you're gonna make over two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, and I'm gonna prove it to you. But before we do that, there's a few other things I got to show you, and we're going to give you, I'm going to give you these four protocols. So think about protocols as being required conditions. So a protocol is more, it's not, these aren't rules, these are protocols. Like, think of, we think of rules, and eh, that's a rule, we can break it. No, protocols are like, it's a required condition. You have to do it. If you'll do it, it'll work. If you don't, it won't work, okay? Now, so with that, let me explain to you, I'm going to, I, I got to explain to you, we're going to talk about two systems. We're going to talk about an open system and a closed system. So this is where the math piece of this comes in. And I'll show you what this is going to look like. But first, let me draw this for you to show you this, this whole process where I'm saying I can guarantee you money. Yeah. I thought oh, you sorry, had a question. I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> oh. So it's going to look like this, okay? This, this whole process is going to look something like this, okay? And where, when I'm saying to you, I will guarantee you over $200,000 a year, I'm talking about from this point right here on, which to get to that point might take six to nine months. So what I'm saying is six to nine months from now, I would say from that point on, you're going to be making over $250,000 a year if you'll just do these four things. And they're not hard. They're not hard. Okay? But this is what it's going to look like now. Here's the thing. I have been teaching this class for over 15 years. Very, very few people will leave this class and actually go do the four things that I'm going to tell you. And they're not hard. They're not hard. But for whatever reason, and I promise you, no, it's not even embarrassing, but I promise you're going to leave this class seeing, yep, yeah, I can see if I did that, it would work. And you're going to be excited about it. And then you're going to leave here and then you're going to not do it. Now, I wish I knew why that was. I, I have an idea, and, I, and here's part of the idea. 
Who knows much about how bamboo grows? What do you know about bamboo? It's a slow-growing plant that then needs to have a root system underneath the dirt before it actually starts showing. Okay, good. That's over a long, long period of time. So that's my So, but when it finally does pop through the ground, what happens? It's fast. Shoot. Really fast. But it takes four years before that's going to happen. So now, good news for you. I just told you this is going to take six to nine months, not four years. This is not going to take four years. But think of it like that from the standpoint in this six-month window. Here's why I believe people get excited about this class and then leave and don't do it is because notice if this is the money, this line right here is money, what happens the first almost three to four-ish months? There's nothing. Very little. Difference. It seems like, so I want to keep it, keep be clear, it seems like nothing's working. Now, if you were growing bamboo for four years, what are you going to think? That's it's dead. not working. Dead. I'm watering it. I'm pulling the weeds. Nothing's happening. Bamboozled. I've been bamboozled. But so now here, this is why I believe that people come to this class, get excited about it, and then they leave and don't do anything is because the first three months to four-ish months, it's, you're going to be doing everything I said, and it feels like nothing's happening, and so they, they quit. So it's like a human baby. It will take nine months. There you go. There you go. It's going to take nine months. Yeah. You're pregnant. Good job. Congrats. <laughs> okay. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Now, so now we're going to now talk about two different types of systems. I went and grabbed my dice that I needed here. My die, I guess. Is it is the proper term die or dice for this? Dice. This die. is a die, right? Die. Yeah. Dice. Okay. I say is it right, Michael? One's a die. I think that's right. Yeah, One's yeah. a die. So I went and grabbed my die here, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a second here. But before we do that, I want to first um, help you understand how the way that your brain typically thinks about um, what we're going to do now is basically something you would do in a statistics class. Like this is statistics 101, but it's not going to be hard. So don't like, don't, if you don't like math, don't panic, okay? But think of it this way. So when I was a new agent, I had my manager tell me that if I wanted to make $100,000 a year, I needed to talk to 50 people every day. And if I talked to 50 people every day, I'd get 50 transactions a year. And at that point, 50 transactions a year was $2,000 a transaction. So that would have been $100,000 a year. I was like, done, I'll do it. Now, he also told me this. And so you guys can tell me if you have ever heard this before. but. Typically, you're going to hear if you haven't heard, if you talk to 100 people, you should get 10 leads, and from those 10 leads should turn into one transaction. Has anybody heard that before? Scott, you've heard it? Okay. That is not an uncommon thing to be told in our business, is that if you talk to 100 people, you should get 10 leads. From those 10 leads, you should turn it into one transaction. Well. I already told you guys, I was doing 50 contacts a day, which means I was doing 250 contacts a week, which should have, if this is true, I should have gotten 25 leads and done two and a half transactions per week, which would have equated to over 100 transactions a year, which at that time would have been over $200,000 a year, which would have, sounds great, but here's what I'll tell you. I was doing 250 contacts a week. I might have been getting 25 leads, but I was not getting two and a half transactions a year. Now, here's why. This sounds good until you really look at what this really says. Now, so let me actually explain to you. The reason I drew a circle up here is if I grabbed a map and I drew a circle, and it would have to be a pretty big circle on the map to get statistically for this to work. But if you drew a circle on a map, a pretty big circle, what would be the chances, and let's maybe just say this is all of Salt Lake County, this, or even just half, but let's say it's a significant portion of Salt Lake County. What percentage of the people in this map should move in the next year? Do you guys have any idea? 
Okay, I'll help you out there. According to the, the U.S. Census Bureau, now, and this is across the whole country, but 12% of the population moves every year. Now, when I say moves, I'm including renters in this, though, too. So, like, and renters obviously move a little more often, right? So 12% of the population, according to the Census Bureau, when they go out and do the census, what they find is every year about 12% of those people are moving, but that includes renters. If we factored out for the renters and just said people that are buying or selling, 7% of the population is going to buy or sell real estate in the next year. Okay? Now, if that's true, and I go knock on this person's door, well, let's, I'll go back to Julie over here. I go knock on Julie's door. What are, what are the, the odds that she's going to move? If, the, if, there, if 7 percent of the population moves every year, 7 chance. there's a 7 percent chance that she's going to move. Right? Everybody get that? There's a 7 percent chance. Well, that doesn't sound too bad because what we think that means is this. If I talk to 100 people, I should come across basically seven, which, oh, let me do the mom pot kettle math real quick. So if this, if we use 7% and I talk to 100 people, how many transactions should that be? Seven. How many? Seven. No. Nope. 14. Just like mom pot kettle. It's 14. Now why? Oh, sell and buy. That's why. The reason it's not seven, so this is as hard as math is going to get. The reason it's not seven is because every home that sells is two transactions. There's a buy side and a sell side. So meaning there's two commissions paid. So out of 100, there was 14 potential transactions. Okay, That's the mom pot kettle math. That's the only reason I showed you that video. Now, so if I go knock on her door, there's a 7% chance. Well, here's the way you and I typically think, or at least I, I believe you think this way, unless you've been through a serious amount of statistics, you probably think this way. According to this is a one in 10, right? One in 10 here and one out of 10 here, right? So what we think that means is that if I go knock on Julie's door and she tells me no, how many more doors do I need to knock on to get a yes? Seven. Seven, 10? Nine? Nine, 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 nine. Okay. nine more, right? Seven. Should be nine more doors, right? Because she told me no. Now, here's the problem. That's not the way statistics work. Here's what we prove it to you. Watch. Pick a number between one and six. Five. I, I made the mistake one time teaching this class. Did you say five, too? Okay. I made the mistake one time teaching this class where I said, I was holding the dice, and I said, pick a number. And somebody said seven. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, so now I clarify it. When I, okay, so five. What are the odds that I'm going to roll a five? Right now, I'm going to roll it. What are the odds? One, six. One, out of, one out of six, right? Okay, so let's see what happens. Because according to what we said here is, is one out of ten, I should only need to talk to nine more. So there's one. Somebody keep track how many rolls it takes me to get a five. So there's two rolls. Three. I love it when this works out right. Okay, so that means I should roll a five right now, right? Yeah. Because this is, I've rolled five times? Four. Uh, four. Oh, four. Okay, so we got two more times. Okay? All right, so I'm going to get a five this time based on what you guys said. One out of six. Here's my sixth roll. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see how long it takes. So keep, is somebody still counting? Okay. Eight. Eight. Nine. So it took nine, nine rolls. Yeah. But wait a minute, I thought you guys said the odds were one out of six. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. So let's talk about how it really works. How it really works is, so let me do it again. What are the odds that I'm going to roll a five? One out of six, right? Okay. Now what are they? Now what are the odds? One out of five. Well, is it one out of five or one out of six? Oh, it's still one out of six. Still one out of six. That's the problem. Well, because don't you have a you have a five out of six chance every single time of not rolling that? Thank you. That's exactly where I'm going. So now let me convert that over to this. If there's a one, there's a 
one out of 10 chance, what, is, what does that really mean? So say what you just said about the dice so in terms of- So there's a one out of 10 chance, there's a 90% chance that you're not going to move. Right. Or so there's a 90% chance she's gonna tell me, to tell, I'm not trying to convince you not to door knock, by the way. <laughs> okay. No, I, I know. Okay. But I'm not trying to convince you guys that, but I do want you to see what the truth about, because we think of it as, okay, well, I only got to talk to nine more, but in actuality, what are the odds against me? Nine to one. <laughs> what, so now I leave her door and I come to yours. What are the odds? Nine to one. So nine to one against me. What are they now? What are they now? Still nine to one. What are they now? What are they now? What are they now? They never get better. Knocking, again, I'm not trying to convince you not to knock on doors. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. But but I'm helping you understand with thoughts. Go ahead. So given enough data, it would eventually amount to... Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, so, so now here's the key. You're exactly right. In math, there's a term called regression towards the mean. And, and what that means is over time, it will balance out. Meaning, because you're exactly right. If, I ro if we rolled this... Um, a million times. Well, it probably have to be more than a hundred even to get it to be statistically right. If I rolled this a million times, we're going to end up being rolling a five, probably one out of every six times. So you're right. So the question is, do you want to go talk to a million people knocking on doors to get to the one out of ten? Well, are you talking more? And I'm not trying to convince you not to door knock. Just keep in mind. <laughs> I'm just helping you see what the challenge is with odds. Well, and there's ways in it. I mean, you're going back to, I don't gamble, but there's ways in which you can kind of bet it better against the house and find more. You're not necessarily going to change the odds, but you can find better prospects. Is that kind of where you're getting at where with this? Like, yeah, so that's why we're going with this is, is think of it this way. So I'm not saying don't door knock. What I'm saying is use your door knocking here, this prospecting as your funnel. And, and it doesn't have to be, like, for you, it might be door knocking. If somebody else, it might be an internet lead. Somebody else, it might be a for sale by owner. Somebody else, it might be an expired. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. You're just, just think of it as you're going to have a funnel here that you're going to funnel people into. And then we're going to either get them to become a client. We're going to stay in contact with them once a week, or we're going to move them over to this category. And this category is where I'm going to show you how but the first protocol the first thing that has to happen for you to following these things for you to for me for you for me to guarantee you the income the first thing that has to happen is your sphere of influence has to be a closed system now watch let me show you why because this is my game so and since anthony brought it up you can't go to Vegas and do this. I, if we could, I would not be here teaching the class. I would be in Vegas doing this. <laughs> so don't try this in Vegas, okay? But we're gonna see, we're gonna do it again. Only we're gonna change the rules, and I'm gonna change the rules from an open system. See, the reason, actually, in fact, let me even just say this: the reason Vegas works, the reason that all those casinos are like they are, is because the owners of those casinos understand odds. They understand the odds and the odds are in their favor. And so the only way they lose was COVID. What happened during COVID? They're shut like, if nobody shows up, as long as people show up to Vegas and they're putting money on a table or in a machine, Vegas wins because they understand odds. See, they understand how the odds work. All that matters, they, do they care if somebody hits a jackpot and gets a $2 million prize? No, be at $100 million yeah, because as soon as that goes off, everybody else's wallets come open and they're start feeding more money in there because they want to win. See, they understand odds. Yeah. Are they going to have to pay it out? Yes. But at the end of the day, they know that every game that's played, they're siphoning off a little bit of money. They understand the odds. See, so I'm going to help you guys understand the odds so you can play your SOI as a closed system instead of an open system. As soon as you make it a closed system, it becomes magic, and I'll show you why. So we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to change the rules. But sorry, Russ, are you saying so? What exactly is a closed? I'm going to show you. Going to yeah, that's, okay. I, mean, I first want to show you this, then then I'll show I'm you not how. I'm really... asking questions. So I don't understand <laughs> something. I'm going to ask. No, I know, I know. <laughs> In fact, so just so you guys know, I've known Anthony since how old were you when I? 
10 or 11. I think it was 11. I was it, like, I've known him since he's like 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went back to Detroit with UWM, which I know a bunch of you guys have too. And I was sitting there at UWM and this guy keeps asking questions. And I'm like, that totally sounds like Anthony. I didn't know he was back there because he was back there with a different lender, not with Inspiro. And I was like, I totally, look. and I'm like trying, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it is. So anyway, <laughs> it was kind of funny. So a bunch of these guys have been back there too, to, to nice. Detroit for that. Okay. So we're going to talk about how the, the odds and what the closed system. So same thing, only we're going to change the rules. And because it's my game, just like this is your real estate business, you get to control the rules of the game. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll this and we're going to see how many rolls it takes me to get a five, except for we're going to change one thing. Every time I roll something that is not a five, I'm going to put one of these stickers on it. And then if I roll it and that sticker comes up, I automatically get a free throw, meaning it doesn't count as a roll. Understand? Okay. So let's see how many, how many it takes me to get a five now. Did you say oh, that? Was close, yeah. It was close. Too. So, okay. So that was a one. So I've rolled it one time and there, so now it's covered. So if that shows up, I get a free throw. So don't count it. Who, who's going to be our official counter? Okay. You got it, Scott. Okay. So I've rolled it one time. So let's see what happens now. Okay. So there's a six. So now I'm going to put a sticker on that. So we've rolled it two times, got two stickers. Oh, okay. So how many times did we have to roll it? Three times to get a five. Okay, now we're going to keep going, though, to see how long it keeps happening. So same thing. I still get a free throw if that circle shows up. Okay, free throw. So that one doesn't count, Scott. No roll. That was a free free roll. Free roll. That was a free. Five. How many times do I have to roll it? One. Okay, let's keep going. Free throw. Okay, so there's one. Two, three, what? I know, that's what I'm saying. We can do it in Vegas, because now what's going to happen now? I've got every single side covered except for the five. So free throw, free throw. I mean, what's the most throws it's going to take me, Scott? Good thing I didn't do leg day today. Getting all my squats in right now. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I rolled it three times, haven't I? Well, no, Without no but then you got the five. No, I was putting more stickers twice. on. You rolled it twice. Oh, twice. twice. So it'll be so the most it's going to take me to get it is three. But what's going to happen after that? What are my odds? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now going forward, now every time I roll it, it's either going to be a free throw or a five. How would you like to do real estate that way? Hmm. I'm going to show you how. Okay. Now, whew, I ran down to the stairs and back up, and I didn't get as winded as I just got rolling that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I know. That okay. Worth it. Now, so this is an open system. In an open system, the odds don't change based on the number of times you do it. But we're going to have our SOI be a closed system. And with a closed system, is going to operate like that. Okay, We're turning our real estate career into doing that. So to some extent, when you say, I wish we could go to Vegas and do it, me too, because we'd probably make more money than what we're going to do here, but we can still make good money doing it this way here. So here's what I'm going to tell you. The number of people you should have in this it is got to be fixed. So the thing that makes it closed system is fixed in size. Okay. So your number of people for your sphere of influence has to be fixed in size. Now, the number I'm going to tell you to use for that is 200. But keep in mind, it's really just fixed in size. Now, the reason I say 200 is because of this. If you do, if you do less than 200, it's going to take you longer than six to nine months. If you do more than 200, it's going to take you longer than six to nine months. If you'll start with it being 200 in size or ramp it up to 200 in size, you'll be able to hit this in six to nine months. If it's less than that. 
If it's less, it's going to take you, I mean, if you said I'm going to do fixed in size with 100, it's probably going to take you a year before it. I've just found that 200 seems to be the number that if you go much less than that extends this, if you go much more, it extends it. But if you'll stay with 200, it'll work. Now, once it's working, you could change it. You could change it from 200 down to 100. In fact, um, the agent that I like to talk about that I trained in this, that I know does it the best of anybody I've ever trained it, and, and I talked to her recently, she still does it, is Tonya Messina. Tonya Messina built her real estate career doing this. That's what that and she when, when I met her, so I met her in probably it was 2005 or 2006. So like almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, was it? Yeah. <laughs> so I met her that long ago and I trained her in this system. And this the last time I asked her how much money she was making, I haven't asked her recently. The last time I asked her this was was before home prices have shot up. So like this would have been in mid I don't know, 2015, maybe, maybe, yeah, probably around 2015 was the last time I asked her. So I guess almost 10 years ago now. But at that time, she had her fixed in size number. Now, don't hear this as, oh, well, then that means I only have to do that number. You got to start with 200. She started with 200. Once she got it working, though, and I'll show you later on how she decided what her number was going to be, she went from 200 to 97. She had 97 people was her fixed in size number, and she was generating back then almost $400,000 a year before home prices shot up. So, and, and we could go look up her production, but I think she sells typically somewhere around 50 houses a year still. Now, so do the math on that 50 houses a year times, let's just say a $10,000 commission, $500,000, not bad, huh? Now, she follows this exactly how it is. In fact, I did see her within the last year and I didn't ask her what her income was, but I did ask her, are you still doing this? And she said, I have no other way to do my business. And she has fine tuned a few things and I'll, t I'll point those out to you after talking to her that uh, she's fine tuned that, um, that she does, that, but it's still working for her. Like she's still making a good income. Okay, so number one, first thing you have to do is you got to get a select group of people that is fixed in size. And to begin with, the number has to be 200. Now, once you see it paying off, which by the way, I will tell you, I have observed over and over and over again this, where it'll feel like nothing's happening. And then notice what happens here. All of a sudden, you'll do four deals or five deals in one month just from this. And it's just, that's what it just, and it's what, uh, Lou's already said it's during this time it's getting its root structure in place so that it can then do this and it will do it now which by the way like Gabe is his dad is um, Aaron Pearson for those that know does everybody know who Aaron is I mean I know Anthony doesn't you know who he is do you know who he is okay which he him and Perry are co like team leads I guess right and I think they're following this. Yeah. Like, and they're doing they're doing monthly get-togethers for this group of people, yeah. which that's not actually one of the things I'm going to tell you you need to do, but it's a great idea. Yeah. It's not going to hurt, I guess, is what I'm saying. But so, okay. Now, so we got to have it fixed in size. 200 is the number to begin with. Once you once you once it starts to pay off, you can adjust it to whatever number you want. If you want to go to 300, go to 300. If you want to go to 100, go to 100. Here's what I will tell you though, and then I'll let you ask your question. I've never seen it work with less than 75. I do know one guy that had 75 as his fixed in size once he got it working and it worked pretty good. Anytime I've seen anybody do less than 75, it will just won't work. So go well, I was just going to comment that your friend that you are talking about, she, she fine tuned it to you said 97? 97 was the number. So she kind of yeah, but I'll show you how she came up with that number in a minute because you'll want to come up with a number based on the same process, okay? but it won't be necessarily the same number. But okay, so that's number one. That's the first thing that happens to happen is you got to get 200 people in there. 
okay? So fixed in size means it can't be 201 and it can't be 199. So Scott, if you're gonna hold me to it, how many's it gotta be? 200. Okay. Can't be 201, can't be 199. I've asked this question probably four times. That's okay. So you've never seen anybody have that have more than 200? No, no, I have seen more than 200. Oh, yeah, okay. So, but if you, get, if you get beyond 300 is where I would say it starts to get watered down. So, yeah. So the I, key I have... The thing is that it has to be fixed. The key thing, thank you, that is the key thing is this. Fixed in size is what makes it a closed system. And that's what's going to make it work. See, if you go to um, real estate seminars where you've got these speakers up there speaking, I've seen people that make a lot of money go up there and be like, I've got 4,000 people in my database. Yeah, 4,000 will never work. Because you can't do what I'm going to, the next three things with 4,000 people. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I got 6,500 people in my database. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, well, and so here's the thing. Here, here's the other thing that bothers me is top real estate trainers will tell you you should get a 10 to 15% return on that, which means you should be doing 65 deals a year at least. Yeah, do you do 65 there. deals I a year? I don't do 65 deals a year. <laughs> but, but it's also, it's like, do I want to do 65 deals a year if I'm just doing it 60? I'd much rather go up at a higher price point. Yeah. And that's fine. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So that's the that's key thing has got to be fixed in size. What number you decide it ends up to being, like I said, less than 75, I don't think it's really going to work. And more than 300 just becomes too much work is usually what it is. It's most people won't do it because it comes too much work. Okay, so now what, what is the rest of the work? Well, let's talk about that. The next thing that has to happen, number two, you have to have permission from all 200 people. So let me ask you, Anthony, you got 6,500 people. Have you talked to and asked them for permission to stay in contact with all 6,500? Not all 6,500, no. So that's the, the next thing that has to happen. So remember I said, this isn't that hard. I'm, these four things really are not that difficult, but you gotta get permission. So let me help you with that, what that's gonna look like. Permission is gonna sound something like this, and then I'll, I'll give you two different versions of it after I say this. The first is permission sounds something like this. I have a select group of people. So you're going to hear me from now on. I'll keep referring to this fixed in size or closed system, or you'll hear me say select group of people. So you're going to say to get permission, I have a select group of people that I stay in touch with about real estate, and I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? They're going to say yes. Okay. So I have a select group of people that I stay in touch with about real estate, I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? They're going to say yes. You now have permission. Okay. Now, so let's talk about. I wish Michael wouldn't have left. I was going to tell him how to use it with door knocking because he's uh, planning on being a door knocking fiend. I think, isn't he, Aubrey? Yeah. We'll see, we'll see you today. <laughs> oh, are you going door knocking with him today? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. Here's how I would do it: door knocking. So, um, so I'll do. Let's see. Scott, I'll use you this time. Okay, so knock, knock. So do not tell me you, like, do not set an appointment with me. Don't uh, agree to meet with me no matter how good I am. Okay, so knock, knock. Okay, good. So knock, knock. Hello. Hi, my name is Russ. I'm with Century 21. And we just listed your neighbor's home over here on Birch and Pine. It's got four bedrooms, three baths, listed for $5.99. And I just was wondering who you know that would want to move into the area. Nobody. Nobody? Okay. Well, I appreciate you thinking about it. How about you? When do you plan on making the move? When they carry me out the body bag. When they carry out? Which, I have you heard that a few times, Aubrey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, or when they bury me under that tree, I always laugh like it's the first time I've heard it. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me ask you, uh, so how long have you lived here? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. Wow, good for you. Where did you move from? Um, St. George. Oh, from St. George to here. Oh, that's cool. So what brought you up here? My kids. Your kids. Makes sense. Okay. Well, so how did you happen to pick this this particular area? Um, I don't even remember. Oh, don't even remember. Okay. Well, hey, let me ask you. If you ever were to move, where would you go next? I have no plans to move. There's no plans. 
at all. Okay, cool. Well, hey, Scott, I actually have a select group of people that I just stay in touch with about real estate. And I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? No, so I don't really, I don't care. I don't have, I have, I have no interest in it. Really sure. No, I totally understand that. But are you ever curious about like what's going on in your neighborhood and how homes have sold for and stuff? I said, just don't set an appointment with me. I didn't say be a jerk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought you wanted to be cold shouldered. No, no, no. Oh, no, that well, doesn't okay. teach anything. For the oh, class. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because, yeah, if I get that, okay. I'm going to go, all right, see you later. <laughs> Hi, my name's Russ with blah, 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 blah. Who do you know wants to move into the area? Um, I don't think anybody. Okay, well, uh, it, how about you? When do you plan on moving? Uh, never. My house is paid for it, and I know it. Oh, good for you. Where, so how long have you lived here? 25 years. 25 years. Wow, that's great. Where did you move from? We moved from renting in Holiday. From renting in Holiday here? That's awesome. So what brought you out here? Just because there was a new subdivision that was affordable. Oh, makes sense. New subdivision. Cool. Well, hey, if you ever were to move, where would you go next? Mexico. To Mexico? Really? So when would that be? Not a chance. You're probably not going to? Okay. Well, hey. Let me ask you, I've got a select group of people, so for you guys, I've got a select group of people that I just stay in touch with about real estate, and I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? What would the list be for? Yeah, great question. So ultimately what I would do is, is I'm just going to send you information about homes that have sold or are for sale in your area, okay. and then I will just give you a call periodically just to touch base to see if you have any real estate questions, if there's anything I could do to help you with real estate. Or if you have questions about the email that I sent to you. Okay. Do you do you have in there uh, a way for me to see how my price, my house? Yeah. It will. Yes. It, yep. It'll price. actually give you an idea of what's going on with the home prices in your neighborhood. Correct. Sure. Okay. So great. What would be the best email address to send it to? Blah blah blah. Okay. And what would be the phone number? My phone blah blah blah. Okay. Boom. So I just got permission. So in terms of door knocking. So push over. <laughs> so in terms of door knocking, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm first, my primary objective is I want to set an appointment, but if I can't get an appointment, then I'm going to try to add her to my select group of people. So you're really going to, some, something like that, you're going to be part of your select 200. Correct. So I did once with, and with I'll a, say more about that in a bit. With a lady and, and she said yes, and then changed her mind. I said, no, I, yeah, I don't think I'm interested. Okay. Dre, if they're not interested, move on. Yeah, so like same thing with Scott. When I said, I've got a select group, and he said, no, I'm not interested. Okay, next. All right, same next. Way. Then I'm going to go to Anthony. Hey, I've got a select group of people I stay in touch with about real estate. I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? Sure. Okay, what would be the best email address and what's your phone number? Yeah. Okay, he gave me permission. Uh, how do you fire people from this list? I'll show you. We're not there yet. Oh, I'll come yep. <laughs> again. All right, my So how do you, what's like the way to contact these people? It's like there could be a big list of people that I email. Yeah, because this one is going to be, so you want to have a fixed in size number. And this group is going to be different than just a, I'm just sending random emails. You got to get permission. Is that answered? Yeah, and then what kind of contact is it? Is it a lot of like. I'll show you. We're not, yeah, we're not there yet. So, but, but so that's the first way is, is whatever type of prospecting you're doing, I don't care what it is, until you get to 200 people, because you're going to ramp it up. When I first started training this, I used to train it as you have to start at 200. Like go get a phone book and rip out 200 Andersons and that's your fixed in size people. Like that's where you would start. That's not. Today I'm like, just ramp it up. So now, so part of that ramp up is gonna be, you got 6,500 people. How, what about the rest of you? How many people in your phone? How many contacts? Just ballpark, anybody you know? 11, How much? 499. <laughs> Uh, 872. Okay, so start start with the, that group. That's where I want you guys to start with this. Pull out your phone, and everybody that's in your phone, you're going to call and do this. So, Michael, I'm going to pretend I'm you for a minute, okay? Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to call. Who, actually, who's the first person on your list? Pull out your phone. Tell me who's the in your contacts, who's the first person? And if they're an agent, then skip them and find one that's not. Because... My struggle on mine is I got tons of people in mine, but they're all most of them are agents, and I'm not going to 
call and ask them for permission to be in my the two uh, years ago. I'm still 22, so a lot of my a lot of my are Abby, Abby, Abby de Fleur. Sounds like you know her really well. <laughs> <laughs> Go to who's the next one then? Somebody you know, actually. Adeline. Or Adeline? You're still not even confident. I want somebody else. I, I want somebody, somebody you, that knows you. <laughs> Amber, I know Amber. Okay, so you're going to be Amber, okay? So I'm going to now call you up. So be Amber. Okay. Okay? So ring, ring. Uh, hey, Michael. Hey, Amber, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Good. Hey, when's the last time you talked to her? Amber. Yeah. When's the last time you talked to her? She's a <laughs> When's the last time you talked to her? Um, like two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. Hey, I haven't talked to you for a while. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Cool. Hey, I don't know if you had heard or seen, but I actually went and got my real estate license. Were you aware of that? Oh, I was. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I went and got my real estate license and I decided I'm going to make a career out of real estate. And one of the things that I've been learning is the best way to do that is by referral. So I just had a question. If you ever had a real estate need, who would you call? Um, someone I know. So do you have someone you know? Or or you were just saying you would call someone? I, I guess I do now. Oh, perfect. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was calling to see. Is it, it, Would it be okay if I added you to a select group of people that I'm just going to stay in touch with about real estate, keep, my, keep them updated on what's going on in their area, and then periodically just give you a phone call to see if you have any questions? Would that be okay? Perfect. So what email address is the best that I sh should send you some information? In? Uh, she's going to give me, and then I already have her phone number, so I don't need to ask for her phone number, but she's given me permission. Great. She's, a, she's, there's one. Then you're going to go to the next person in your phone. Ring, ring. Hey, Susanna, this is Russ Orchard. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Hey, I don't know if you know, but I went and got my real estate license. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's way cool. I'm really excited about it. And one of the things I've learned is that the best way to do that is by referral. So I'm putting together a select group of people that I'm just going to stay in touch with about real estate. Would it be okay if I add you to that list? Oh, yeah. Why not? Perfect. So what email address would be the best? I'm just going to send you an email once a month. Oh, that's, that's pretty awesome. Well, she gives it to me. Yeah. You're just going to go through that your phone. And guess what? If you get to one of the names, if Amber is an ex and you don't want to call her, don't call her. It's fine. Go to the next person. But go through and call and give permission. Start with the people in your phone that you already know, friends, family, any of that kind of stuff. Call them and ask for permission to stay in touch with them about real estate. Just stay out of the Westland neighborhood. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I was just thinking about that last time. You know, there's some good people in there. I was doing a market analysis on yeah, my So two houses in there in the last. I know. I was looking at those. I was doing a market analysis for oh, my right? old house over there. Oh, were you? Yeah. Okay. So, um, any questions on the permission piece? <clears throat> you understand how to do it. Like, it doesn't matter who you're prospecting. That's the fun. If it's door knocking, I first try to set an appointment. If I can't get an appointment, then I've got a select group of people that I stay in touch with about real estate, and I'd like to add you to the list. Now, back to what I think Lou said. You're especially people you don't know. They are going to say yes, you can do that, and then they're never going to respond to you. And we'll tell, I'll tell you how to deal with that in a minute, okay? So well, I, I just was going to say about the permission thing. Yeah. That there was a, a lady in my world, 41 at NDS, that she never asked for permission. She just went through Well, the, that's how most agents do it, is they then, don't ask for permission. And then right. she just get everybody. Yes. And then I start receiving things. And yep. it was annoying. Right. Because I was thinking, hey, I never agreed to this. Yep. You're actually not supposed to do that, either. Yeah, in the, the church tools. <laughs> so here's the thing. Though, they are gone, but here's the thing. The reason you want to do this too. The re other reason I want you to go through and call these people, which I, I had a guy that said he was going to be on Zoom. So if he's not there, I'm disappointed because I've got a guy that's with a different company that I was starting to train on some of this, and I told him you should come to the class today, and he said he couldn't, so he said he would join on Zoom. But I got him calling through the phone, like what I just told you guys to do. He's already picked up a listing and a buyer just from making these phone calls. So like, from the phone? I mean, from his? Just from, the, yeah, calling the people in his phone that were contacts in his phone, calling them to get permission. He's already picked up somebody that wants to sell and wants to buy. Like, 
I'm not saying that's 100% going to happen, but I, I am never surprised if one of you guys starts making the calls through there. If you came back and you were like, guess what? I picked up a deal off it. I'm going to be like, yeah, surprising me. What happens when you actually call the people you know, right? So that's what you want to do is you, you want to call and get permission. So we get on permission. Okay, yeah. next. What would you do, Russ, with those individuals that like you want and you know like for sure? Would you, is, is it appropriate to still leave a voicemail if you can't get a hold of them? Or so yes, but the voicemail I would leave would be just, "Hey, this is Anthony. Give me a call back. I got a question for you." Okay, awesome. And the reason you're going to say I got a question for you is because you want them to be curious of like what's the question that he has. So then they're going to call you back. Yeah. Okay. So and in fact, the other thing is, if somebody tells you no during permission, that's okay. At least you now know that they already have somebody else or they're not going to work with you, whatever. So um, there's a guy that lives in my neighborhood. Do you remember Jay Despain? Do you know who he was? Okay. Yeah, so. so when I was doing this, I called around through people in my neighborhood that I knew, and I called Jay Despain. And I said to Jay, I'm putting together a select group of people, blah, blah, blah. If you had a real estate need, who would you call? And he said, you know, Russ, I'm not one to mix business with friends. And so... Unfortunately, I wouldn't be willing to use you. And I said, that's okay, I understand that. But if you had a need, would you let me refer you to somebody at my office? And he said, yeah, I would do that. Okay, great. Now, so I added him to the list because, because the other thing actually, sorry, I left out one other piece. I said, if you heard of somebody thinking of buying or selling, would you refer them to me? And he said, yeah, for sure, I would do that. Great. So I stayed in touch with him. And over the years, he has referred people to me that I've gone and helped. He hasn't moved still. I ran into him not long ago. I mean, I see him a lot, but one day not long ago, I ran into him and I said, hey, I talk about you in my class at work. And he's like, what do you say? And I said, I tell him about that time I called you and said that, asked you if I could stay in touch with you about real estate. And you said that if you had to, were going to buy or sell, you'd never use me. And he goes, I never said that. I would totally use you. <laughs> what? So it changes. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He was like, I never said that. I would totally use you. And I was like, you said it, but, just <laughs> but it, well, here's what I think is my guess is that was early on when he had moved into the neighborhood. He didn't really know me that well and or maybe he wasn't in a great financial position and now he is, you know, maybe he was leveraged on his house. Didn't want me to know. And maybe now it's paid for. So he's like, yeah, you could, I, you know, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, and he actually told me that day, I'm probably going to retire in two years and I will have you sell my house. Oh, I shouldn't have told you who it was, huh? <laughs> Stay away. Again? I Stay won't away. do that. I won't do that to you, Russ. I know. Okay. I don't know him well, so. Okay. Good. All, yours. all right. So next. So that's number two out of the four things that we have to do. The third is contact one time per month, email or mail. And you could do a combination of that. Either way, it doesn't matter. So you're going to send them an email once a month, and you're going to send them a mailing once a month. Now, the other part of the number either three, or, right. it could be either one, and you could mix it up. Like you could do two months of emails and one month of an actual mailing. But it does whatever you want to do. You could just do all email. You could do all mail. I don't care. Just get it to them now. For you guys that are with Century 21, because Anthony's not yet with us. <laughs> but for you guys that are with it's Century 21, we have a system that you're going to just put them in to Moxie Engage. And you, you're going to set them up on Neighborhood News, and it's going to automatically do this once a month for you. So I don't know. Did you stay at Real, or where are you at? I'm at um, Real Estate Essentials, the TV show. I don't know. Yeah, I won't, I won't, I won't do they have a system, the database system? Well, I, I, I own, I, I don't like using the company's database for some of the reasons that you might talked about. When, yeah. Yeah. So I own my own database. Okay. So I own Boomtown, or which is now, and they bought out, they were bought out by KB Core, so it's right. Boomtown Pro. So I have my okay, own. Okay, but will it do an automatic, oh, yeah. can you set up in this area, send them all the homes that are for sale, under contract, or sold? Yep, I can do okay. all of That's them. That's what you want to do. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. The other thing that's part of number three is you need to have contact with these people one time at least quarterly. But I would say a lot of these people are going to end up being monthly. 
but don't ever let it go more than a, once a quarter. Like that's the max you should go without talking to these people. Now, I taught this for a long, long time that it needed to be, you needed to call them monthly. But I told you I ran into Tonya and was talking to her within the last year, probably even the last six months. And that's one of the things she said is she said, I'm now only doing it quarterly. And I said, I'm so glad she, because I actually had already been thinking monthly, mo, part, remember I said most agents will leave here and not do it. The reason they don't do it is they don't call monthly is what I found. So the, I've actually now changed it to saying at least quarterly, but some, but keep in mind, some of these people you should be calling monthly. Like, let me give you another quick example is somebody else that I had in my database, which I actually just talked to her and her husband on the phone, actually just last week, actually. Even. But they lived in the Balmoral townhouses. If you know where they're out, that is out in West Valley, just off 5600 West and like 27th South, there's a townhouses there. And she cut hair. So I would go get my hair cut. This was my best friend growing up's wife. Daughter lived in there. What? Daughter lived in there. Oh, did she? How long ago? Uh, they've been gone probably longer than that, but how long did she live there? Um, probably two years. Yeah. You could ask her if she knows the Hegemans, but but um, but anyway. So I would go get my hair cut from her. She would cut my hair in her in their basement every six weeks. I would get my hair cut, and just about every six weeks, she would cut a lot of the hair of the women in that complex. And almost every six weeks, when I'd go get my hair cut, she'd be like, "Hey, Russ." You need to call this person. They got a job transfer. You need to call this person. They're getting divorced. Like the hairstylists know what's going on in people's lives. And she always would know. So somebody like that, there was no way I was going to only call her once a quarter. Like I went and got my hair cut every six weeks at max because I was like, I got to find out from Terry who I should be calling in those Balmoral townhouses. Does that make sense? So that's number three. You got to send them an email once a month or a mail, either one or a combination, and contact them at least once a quarter. But, but keep in mind, a lot of these people might be every month. Some of them might be every other month. But if you're not going to call them quarterly, don't even have them in the list. You got to call at least quarter. Okay. Oh, I left out. I forgot. I got to do one more piece here. I got to show you why this works. I forgot. I didn't show so you. So when you, when you need. You said I need to contact these people at least quarterly. We're talking about phone calls. Some type of personal contact is, okay. what, I, is what I'm telling you. So it okay. could be in person. Once you have permission, could even be a text. Okay. Could even be a text. Okay, so now let me show you why this works. I realized I should have told you this, showed you this before I went to number two. Let me show you why this works. So we're going to say that it, I have a database of, let's say, just for the, now I'm not giving you permission to go to 100. I'm just, to keep the math easy, let's say that I've got 100 people in there. But you still, 200 is the number. I'm just doing this to make it easier. Of the 200 or 100 that I've got, 50 of them are green, let's say, and 50, this. 50 are green and 50 are red. So now let me, I'll explain what that means here in a second. So if I have 100 and 50 are green and 50 are red, that means that it's 50-50, right? Now, let me explain green and red. Green is somebody who's either going to do business with you or refer business to you. So they're either going to refer business to you or do business with you. Red is they're not going to. Now, Hopefully you have the question in your mind, well, why would I have somebody in there if they're not going to do business with me? And the answer to that is people lie. You're going to have people that tell you, yes, I, you, I, if I had a real estate need, I'd call you. Yes, you can add me to your group of um, select group of people. So in your mind, all 100 are green, but if you had a crystal ball and or you had this, this uh, superpower that you could really like see into the future and know if somebody was going to use you or not, you would be able to find out that let's just say 50 of them are not. But they're gonna lie to you. And part of that is 
It's easy to get people to lie. It's hard to get people to tell the truth. And, and I can prove it to you if you want me to, but it's easy to get people to lie. Hard to get them to tell you the truth. So they're going to say yes. Now, part of what, will you guys tell me, why are some people going to tell you yes, even though they have zero plans of using you? Their family and they just love you guys. Okay, good. Same thing with just knocking on doors. They're going to tell you yes just to get you off their door. They don't want to tell you no. It's just, yeah, you're, you seem like a nice enough person. Yeah, sure, go ahead. But they really have no intention of it. They're just trying to be nice to you. And ultimately, they don't want to be rude, okay? But so let's say that 50 are red and 50 are green. And let's say that I go out door knocking and I get 10 leads. I get 10 people that say, yes, you could stay in touch with me. So I ask for permission of 10 people from door knocking. Now, of those 10, what should we say, how many of them a year or two years down the road are actually going to really do something real estate related with me? I mean, it's going to be a small number, right? So like, what would you say? Two? Three? What do you want to say? Two or three? Out of uh, 100? Out of 10. No, 10 leads. 10 people that say, yes, you could stay in touch with me. I'd say two. I'd say one. Okay, but just to, we could do it with one, but just to make, two. Well, to make the class a little shorter, let's do two or three. What do you want to do? That's good, two. Two. Okay, I've got one, three, and two twos. What two. are they? Two. Okay, two it is. All right, so let's say we go do that. So now watch what happens. Now, part of what I'm showing you here is the magic of a closed system. Remember I said I should have done this before and I missed. So I got 10 new leads and two of them, we, if we had a crystal ball, we would be able to see two will work out, which means eight are not gonna work out. Now, if we add those up, I now have 58 people here 52 people here, or 110 people. Now, keep in mind, we're going to pretend it's 200. Even every time I say 100 and something, pretend it's 210. I'm only leaving it at 100 just to make the math easy. Okay? But so somebody take a calculator and tell me what the percentages just went to from 100, divide 52 into 110 or 58, either one. And tell me what percentage we're at on those. Two to two is forty-seven point two seven. Okay, so we'll just we'll just say forty-seven, which means if this is forty-seven, this is now fifty-three. Look what just happened. So let me make sure you guys understand. My workload just went up ten percent, right? Because I went from a hundred to one hundred ten, ten percent more to get 3% less. Can you see the problem with an open system? What happens if I keep doing that and keep adding people till I get to 6,500? No, no offense. That's fine. What's gonna happen over here? It's gonna go down. Well, but what's gonna happen to the percentage? It's gonna just keeps going down. Just keeps going down. Yeah. Now, but because it's a closed system, what do we have to do? We can't have 110, we can only have 100. Keep in mind, I said 200, oh. even though I'm saying 100. Right? I can only have 200, but we're going to just say, for the ease of it, I got 110, but I can only have 100. So what do I have to do to fix this mess? I got to get rid of 10 people. So should I get rid of any of these people? So I, okay, so now let's see what happens. So now I'm going to go get rid of 10 of these. So I minus out 10. So now I'm at 48 here, 52 here. And again, this is why I'm sticking with 100 is just to keep the math easy. Now what's the percentage? Look what just happened. The work stayed the same to get 2% more. So now what happens if we do, no, let's be really extreme. Let's just say we were really lucky. We got 10 new and, and eight out of the 10 were green. Watch what happens. Now I know that's probably not gonna happen, but to have this class not go till four o'clock tonight, <laughs> so now I'm back to 110, but we already know I can't do that, so I got to get rid of what? 10 red. So I'm back to 100, and look what just happened. 
what's going to happen? The, the more people I keep adding and then getting rid of the bad ones, what happens to the green? It just gets better and better and better. Now, I want to be really, really clear. Part of the reason this stays flat like this is because early on, it's going to look more like what Aubrey was saying is one out of 10, maybe. And so, but it's even possible. Well, let's, let me actually show you what happens if you totally screwed up. Watch what happens if you screw up. I add 10, all 10 are red. Oops, not 50, I add 10. So now I'm at 50, 60. What do I got to do to fix it? Get rid of 10. Look what happened. You can't screw it up. The only way you mess it up is if you get rid of these people. So would you say that that's... Even if I added 10 people and they're all horrible, but I get rid of 10 that are bad, I'm no worse off. What I'm hoping is that at least one or two or five end up being better than the ones that... See, that's the secret. When I, Once you hit 200, so you're going to grow it up to that. Once you get to 200, if I go knock on Michael's door, knock, knock, and I'm talking to him, and I'm trying to decide, figure out, like, he won't set an appointment with me, but I've got a select group of people. I'd like to add you to that list. Would that be okay? I might not even ask that question if I feel like he's worse than the worst one of these. If he's, if, if I feel like he's going to be no bet, like, think of it as this way. Now when I'm knocking on a door, I'm trying to decide, is he better than the two, even one of the 200? And if the answer is yes, I think he's going to be better because I just had a phone call with somebody and I thought they were crappy, then I'm adding him and getting rid of them. But if I feel like, no, I feel like those people were still better, I'm not even going to ask him if, if I can add him to my group. I'm going to say, thanks for your time and move on. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the idea. And that's how you go through the process of firing. Do you even let them know or you just put them off the list? Okay, great question. So um, let me come back to this. Okay. The purpose of this phone call, now this is a key piece. This is key, key, key. Make sure you hear this. Because this is, remember I said these are protocols. You gotta do it the way that I'm teaching you to do it. If you don't, it's not gonna work. What's the purpose of this phone call once a month or once a quarter? To so qualify as still a It's the number you. Okay. It's actually not that. The purpose of my phone call, and this is crucial. The whole purpose of me making the phone call is for protocol number four. And I don't know if I can underline that enough. The whole purpose of the phone call is to figure out who's red. So I'm not calling them to try to get them to buy a house. This is counterintuitive. It's the opposite of what you would think. Most agents, I, in fact, you guys, if in three months from now I said to you, what's the purpose for the phone call? You're going to say to try to get a deal. Nope. That's not. And there's a difference. There's a difference between calling them, trying to figure out if they're red, and trying to get them to do a deal. What's the difference? So you're going to eliminate if I'm calling looking for a red versus looking for a green, what's the difference? You are just trying to find the rotten tomatoes and throw them in the trash can. Okay, but what's what's going to be the difference in my phone call? If I'm calling looking for a green, what am I going to do? I'm going to be trying to get them to do a deal with me. I'm going to try to set up an appointment or I'm going to do the, If I'm calling looking for red, if I'm trying to find the red, because remember I told you it's easy to get people to lie. It's hard to get them to tell the truth. That's why we're calling looking for the red. I'm trying to figure out who are the people I'm, who are the free throws? Who are the people I need to put a sticker on, get rid of them so that I get a free throw? That's the idea of this. See, the whole purpose of the phone call is not to find out who you can do a deal with. Now, why? What's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to happen with the people who are green? What are they going to do? If they want to buy or sell a house, they're what are they going to do? Volunteer information. Yeah. That when when they want to buy or sell, they're just going to call you up and say, "Russ, come list my house." Russ, we found a house we want to buy. Russ, we decided we want to buy a house. 
Green will take care of themselves. You don't have to worry about the green. So the reason we're not calling trying to get them to become green is because the, when they're green, you're it. You are the agent because you've already been, you've already earned the trust sending them all this stuff. You're the market expert. You've been staying in touch with them. When they have a real estate need, they're just going to call you. See, it, it is very uncommon that these people are going to go do it with somebody else. So, so now, how... How does that look like that? Okay, good. So that's what I was going to say. So, so the question is, how do I figure out if they're red? That's the next piece. How do I figure out if they are red? Well, the way I'm going to figure out if they're red is by calling them and talking to them. Now, here's why. Let's say that I have somebody in there and I've called them for, let's say, well, let me actually even just do this real quick with you guys. Let's just say that I have 200 people, okay? I've got 200 people in there. And let's say that every one of those 200 ends up either referring somebody or doing something themselves only once every four years. So let's say it takes four years, but in a four year period that every one of them is either gonna do something with me or refer somebody to me. How many deals would that be per year? 50 deals a year. You guys okay with that? So, so to me, like kind of look at it that way. I'm not approaching this as they gotta do something in the next three months. Like initially, this group of people, hey, you want to sell a house in 10 years? Great. Because is that bet if you're if you got nobody in your this select group of people and you got somebody who says they want to sell in 10 years, is that better than nobody? Yes. So I'm gonna take them. But over time, and probably in six to nine months, what's gonna happen is that person who's 10 years out, I'm gonna come across, let's say six to nine months down the road, I come across Lou's, and I'm like, okay. She said she wants to sell in the next year. I got this guy that says he wants to do it in 10 years. I'm getting rid of him and replacing it with Luz. Now, good news with that is, hey, let me tell you, and I did this process that we're talking about in my career for a number of years. I have not worked it like this since I went into training, in, in the, into the leadership position. I still... Today, well, I, I just said I sold two houses in our in the neighborhood that where Anthony grew up and where I live still. One of them is a hundred percent because of this, but I, I'm not still working it. It's just I have I created enough of a relationship with these people that when they have a real estate need, they just call me. So I don't even have to keep doing it, but I did it for a long time to earn that. So you have to do it that way too. Okay, so you had a question. So. I'm, I lost my train of thought. So you basically have like a really important list of people and then your list of people that you think maybe would buy within like 10 years. So uh, here's what, I, for me, I don't keep a separate list. For me, it's this is it. This is my select group. So could you keep that? You could, but the, the problem is, here's my fear in that is pretty soon they mesh together and you got 6,500 people and you're not doing 50 deals from 6,500 people. Versus this way, I you can do 50 deals a year from this. So I guess I'm lost too, because I, I thought that when we are doing this, we kind of have two groups. One that we know we are working no. on, one that, no. that who knows. Maybe. Forget the green and red like this. Uh -huh. You just have 200 people. You think they're all green. If you thought they were red, the moment you think somebody's red, get rid of them there. But what I'm saying is some of them that are red, they're just pretending to be green. And your job in calling is to figure out which ones are pretending to be green. So really red. you just have... The 200 and the two callers, just to say something, are together. And you are just trying to figure it out who doesn't belong in there. That's, yeah, in my mind, so you could think of it this way. When you add somebody in, you could think of it as when I added these people in, they're clear. I don't know what color they are. I don't know if they're red or green. They're just clear. But over time, some of them are going to turn green and some of them are going to turn red. And the moment they turn red, they're out. Now, so how do you know who the red are? Yeah. It's actually pretty easy to tell. So 
you're going to be called. This is part of why I'm a little hesitant on saying only call quarterly. I really actually like the idea of every other month better than quarterly, but at least quarterly. Okay. But what you're going to do is let's say that I was calling lose you and you're red. You're not going to want to take my call. So you're probably not going to answer my phone. So when I call, you, you say, oh, it's Russ calling about real estate and not answering that. And then let's say the next month I call. And you can leave a, a voicemail because you gave me permission. So my voicemail is going to sound like this. Hey, Luz, this is Russ. Just checking in to see if you had any real estate needs, anything I can help you with. Want to make sure you're getting the email. If you have any questions, let me know. Hang on. Then the next month, I call. Voicemail. Hey, Luz, this is Russ. Just checking in, see if you had any real estate needs, anything I can help you with in terms of real estate, or if you know of anybody thinking of buying or selling real estate, let me know. The next month, you don't answer. Hey, Russ, or hey, Luz, this is Russ. Just checking in again. But this time I'm going to go, I haven't talked to her for a while because I see it in my notes. So the next month, this is my call. I get your voicemail. Hey, Luz, this is Russ. I've got a really important question for you. Give me a call back. Are you going to call me back? Sure. I'd like to know. Okay. So she wants to know. So if she calls me back, what's my question going to be? Hey, Luz, I'm going to say, Luz, hey, I just, I, I just wanted to check and make sure you're still finding value in the information I'm sending to you. Are you enjoying those emails that I send? Sure. Okay. And if you had a need or know of somebody thinking about real estate, are you still good with referring them to me? Yeah. Okay. Then I may leave her in. But if I, let's say she's hesitant on that. So I go, I just want to see if you're finding value in that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, Luz. If you ever feel like you're not, and you would rather me not calling you, you got to promise me you'll tell me. Okay? Because okay. the last thing I want to do is send information to you and call you if you don't want to be bugged. So will you let me know if that's the case? Sure. You promise? No. So now wait. If I was calling looking for green, you would never say that to somebody. But because I'm looking for red, I'm trying to give her permission to say, yeah, don't ever call me again. Now, I don't want to convince her to be red. So don't go convincing. You wouldn't want me to call you, would you? Like, you don't want to do that. But I want to give her an opportunity to be red. Hey, so if you ever feel like you're not getting value, will you promise me you'll tell me? See. I'm getting, I'm not afraid. See, if I'm calling looking for red, when I find a red, guess what happens? Yes. I figured out. Because remember, they're pretending to be green. But as soon as I figure out she's red, out. Because anybody I put in is going to be better than that. Does that make sense? So that's one way. So the other way I'm going to know they're red is when I leave that message, I got a really important question for you. Call me back. She doesn't call me back. Red. Out. Get rid of her. Because I don't want to work with people like that. Guess how else I'm going to know they're red? I'm going through my database and it pops up that I need to call. And it shows, since Julie left, we'll pick on Julie. It shows to call Julie. And I'm like, oh, maybe tomorrow. Like if you have the feeling of like, oh, I don't really want to call this person. Guess what? They're red. They're red. Get rid of them. You sh this group of people, this 200 people, should be people that when they pop up, you're like, oh, sweet. I get to call Gabe today. That's awesome. Like you should feel that if you don't feel like that with them, if you're like, oh, shoot, I got to call Luz. Dang it. <laughs> if you feel like that, sorry, I'm just going to pick up Julie, huh? If, if, uh, dang it, I got to call. If you feel like oh, I'll do it tomorrow, they're red. Get rid of them. Just get rid of them. Consciously, that's why you're thinking. That's why you can't get rid of them. I'm probably too aggressive when it comes to my. That's like if I call someone, you're gonna like. I know you. Am I good to go? I got somebody. I know you. Do you have any other? Or is this? I'm just wrapping up, so we're good. Okay. Yeah, I gotta. I'm mostly just answering questions. Now we'll be done. Okay. I have one other question I'll ask. Okay. Okay. So if if like if someone kind of ghosts me for a while and they don't call me back, I'm like kicking them out. But if they're like, you know, a week or two, if it's like the very first time I ever talked to them. Like on the door, and they don't call back or text back. I'm like usually like deleting the number like after the first month or so. 
Yeah, if there's somebody like that from door knocking and you can't get them to respond, like part of it again, the answer really comes down to it depends on the other 199 you've got. Like if there are worse people than them, you might say I'll give them another month, but yeah. But I, at the end of the day, so to answer your question, early on, this is gonna churn. Like you're gonna turn over a lot of people. Now, hopefully you're calling your SOI, people meaning people in your phone already, you're calling those people first and getting permission so that you, they won't be. But from door knocking, that type of stuff, yeah, you're going to, a lot of these, you're going to churn. Like, they're going to come in and out pretty quick. But over time, though, which, again, that's part of why this is going to take six to nine months before it really works. won't take that long to start seeing results. You'll start seeing results four or five months in. But during that first three to four months, yeah, you're going to be, Putting people in, taking them out the next month. Put them in, take them out two months. Put them in, take them out in a month. Put, like you're going to have a lot of turnover because you're figuring out the ones that actually really are green versus the ones that are just telling you what you want to hear. So, yeah. I think he answered it. Yeah. I'm good now. Okay. So, Ross, when, do you want, when, you when should we sign you in? <laughs> He's red. Red, get out. Red. Yeah. red. <laughs> I'm kidding. Good to see you. Yeah, All right. What were you? What was your question, Liz? Oh, that when you were calling people, that, that you said, "Hey, this is Ross. Do you have any real estate needs?" This is SOI we are talking about. Oh, so hang on, real quick. Before, you, are you going to do this? Yeah, sure. Very much so. You don't no, I'll track very, you down. Yeah. No. Okay. No, you'll you'll see it on the sales and everything. So. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Thank you. Okay. Good Thank to see you. you. And just when you're ready to sign in, let me know. <laughs> so if it was a family of yours, right? let's say it was a cousin, an aunt, would you leave that kind of message? Which one? Hey, this is Ross. I just wanted to know you have any real estate needs. Kind of that's what you were doing. You're, you're checking that you say. Yeah, I'm just calling. Know. Just So yeah, with family and friends, great question. With family and friends, it would sound like this. Hey, Luz, this is Russ. Just making my monthly business call. So like you want to make sure they know it's a business call. So like when you call them that time, it's a business call. This I'm not calling this talk family gossip. It's a business call. Hey, just making my business calls. Wanted to see if you had anything real estate, if you've heard of anybody. If so, give me a call back. Otherwise, hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. And then when you see those friends and family, people at church, people at the gym, I don't care, like whatever civic things you go do. You only talk to them about real estate unless you only bring it up once a month is the max. If they bring it up, then you're fine. It's like I've told you, a lot of these people that I had in my database for a long time that were friends, families, neighbors, stuff, like they ask me now. I don't even have to bring up real estate. When they see me, they think real estate and go, hey, so what's going on in the market? What are rates doing? And, like they ask me. So if they ask you, you can talk about it more often than once a month. But if, if it, I'm, what you don't want to do is be that people hide from you because they're like, oh, here comes Lou. She's going to ask me if I know of anybody. Like, I don't want to create that. And so if, when you see them outside of your business call, it's, hey, how's the family? What's going on? How was your trip? And, you know, did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah. Like, Totally keep it like, hey, this is a business call. Because some of your friends and family, when you call them up, they're going to be like, hey, did you hear about what happened to so-and-so? And then what you want to do is be like, no, but I want to hear about it. Let me finish making my business calls. I'll call you back in half an hour or whatever. Oh, the one thing I didn't say. So once you've identified this and you've got the 200 and it's working, at that point, you what you want to do is decide how many people per day do I want to call from my SOI and then multiply that by 20 or however many days in the month you're going to call. So like, for example, let's say you're going to do five calls a day times 20 would be 100. So then it's like if I'm going to call five SOI a day, then I'm going to change my number to be 100. If you're going to say now, so with Tonya that I was telling you about for her, she actually went through each day of the month. I can call this many on this day. I'm going to call this many on this day and this many on this day and this many because I, she, she had young kids and she was like, I got to do this on this day and I got to be here on that day. And so at the end she was like, okay, if I call each that many every day, 
I'll call 97 people, and she went, 97 is my number. After she refined her program. Once it was refined. But to begin with, it's 200. And then if you're good with saying, I'm going to call 10 people a day from that SOI. Now, keep in mind, if you're doing it right, when you see those 10 people, you're excited to call them. It's not like, and you might not even have to be excited, but you're not like dreading. If you're dreading calling, get don't even put them in. So when you go through your database, if you come across an ex that you're like, I'm not calling her, then don't. That's fine. There's no mandate to do that. It's just don't you also then can't be mad if you find out she buys a house later on and she didn't use you. It's a and it's a million dollar house yeah, <laughs> with her new husband. <laughs> her pants are super rich. They're like multi-million. Oh, so she oh, might, you might want to add you that. Like, did, you, did you end it on good terms with her? Did you end it with that we can still be friends? Uh, <laughs> oh. 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 You're yeah, toasted. They, they have the biggest house I've ever seen. It was like 8,000 plus. Words. What? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you messed it up. What's up, babe? <laughs> yeah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yes. When are you uploading this? Um, either later today or tomorrow morning. Probably tomorrow morning. My guess is this week. Okay. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you got something good out of it. Thank yes. you. Thank 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 you.